Earnings season kicks off with a bang, ladies and gentlemen. The big four banks come right out today, and they came in kind of as, as expected. However, their forward guidance is negative. Yet Wall Street just shrugs off the news. We're up another 100 points on the Dow, up 2% for the week on the S&P Ooh. 500, the best performing week since November. Welcome, everyone, to Buy, Hold, Sell. I'm your trader, Todd Schoenberger, and I am joined by my friend and co-host, Tobin Smith, out in sunny and hot Scottsdale, Arizona. And we have a very special guest today. Mitch Rochelle is joining us today for Buy, Hold, Sell. And Mitch, I want to go to you first because I see you on TV all the time. You are our celebrity that's on Buy, Hold, Sell. I have got to ask you, though, when you're on TV and you're talking to everyone and you have these big time investors listening to you, what are you telling them? Are you saying that, hey, this market's going to continue to rally, forget the recession, or should we be beware on buyer beware going forward? Uh, I think breath, this Todd. Will... take a breath, Todd. Okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the the market this year is going to be just like the market last year. It's going to be a roller coaster. I don't like you know, if your audience is familiar with the word agita, that <laughs> is uh, something that you better get used to. If Tums or Prilosec or Prevacid, whatever your drug of choice is, keep it handy. But the reality is, it's all going to be dependent upon the Fed. Look what happened this week. We had a better than expected inflation report inflation you know is mm -hmm. at least maybe looks like it peaked and what do the traders do they're running around saying is the fed going to pivot is the fed going to pivot and all you have to do is look at the inversion of the yield curve to know that short term investors have uh, in debt have a much different view than long term investors in debt uh, one, it's a signal of inflation but the other thing i mean a recession rather but i think it's more a signal of the fact that uh Stock investors are very, very focused on what the Fed's going to do, just like last year. Last year, it was reactive. Maybe what we're seeing right now is investors being proactive. So what do you think, Toby? So going forward, now we, we've talked about this with the inflation report. I know that the Fed is looking at a different reading than that CPI headline number. But with that, do we should we be expecting a pivot anytime soon? Because like Mitch said, that's what Wall Street's looking for. That would send markets really rallying if yeah. that is the case. But you, you know, you know me, Todd. See it anytime soon. You know me, Todd. I'm the angry old fuck on this show. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, oh, we can curse. Okay. Yeah, no, you can curse. Just straight oh, yeah. right out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I only got blooped on FBN 25 times too. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but uh, yeah, in my 10 years on there, but I, there's, here's what gets me. What gets me is nobody seems to believe uh, Jerry, we used to call him J Powell, uh, Jerome Powell, that, that he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And those of us who were back uh, in the early 80s, uh, remember <laughs> that, that uh, his hero is Paul Volcker. I mean, he invokes his name as if he's, you know, some form of a deity. And he does not want to go down in history and say, remember when we sort of had inflation on the ropes, but then we cut it off and all of a sudden it, it, it flew back, number one. Number two, he can't move back and saying, hey, you know, 2%, no, 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 no. Well, 3% okay. Can't do that. Bond market runs out. Bond, bond vigilantes are back, you know, like, like, I'll get out. And... You know, Jeff Goodlock, who, you know, is one of the kings of bonds, came out this week and said, look, don't look at what the, what the market's doing. Look at what the bond market's doing. But the bond market is doing some, some stuff because the dollar is finally coming down. And that, you know, I mean, these sound sort of esoteric, but when you add them all up, the people who are, who are betting that there's going to be, you know, this swoon, oh, my gosh, you're right, we overdid it, we're, no, we're cutting rates, we're pivoting. If they think that's going to happen at three and a half or four percent core inflation, then they're smoking better pot than I have out here. Probably in Florida, you got a little better stuff. Uh, but no, you, here, it's me it's medical only in Florida, by the way. Oh, uh, so okay. you, you, well, you got to visit you got to well, visit a I, sketchy doctor. Yeah, I just I just went to the dispensary to get some THC wine since this is a no alcohol month for me. I can't wait to try that stuff. I'm kidding, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But honestly, this is the schism, right? You know, this is like a religious thing. You're either, uh, you either understand that the history is what Jerry and the rest of the crew are most worried about because they lived during the time that I did. He's older than I am, thank God. But he was there at the same time. 
And, you know, there was this other Mamby Pamby, uh, Arthur Young, who was the, the, the chairman before. And he just said, I can't take it any longer. Let's, let's start cutting rates. And that's when we got this big spike up. So history is on the side of just understand this. But the pivot people I love playing against because they, they honestly, I don't think are old enough to understand that when you, mm -hmm. for the last 15 years, we had free money. For the last 15 years, you know, real rates were, were zero. So I don't think they've adjusted. So Mitch, so going with that on the heels of what Toby just said, one of the things that, that we have talked about uh, quite a bit and, and with you on the show on Buy, Hold, Sell a few months ago, we talked about debt and consumer debt. And one thing that JP Morgan came out today and said that they are actually, they saw a 49% increase in credit losses quarter over quarter. It's a huge number, huge number. And that just seemed to be a big shrug by, by a lot of these traders right now. What do you think? I mean, is debt going to be that crippling issue in the, for this year? Because if that's the case, yeah, I think we're anticipating a much greater recession than a lot of these CEOs are telling us today. We have a culture where we don't give a shit about the national debt. So why should we care about consumer debt? I mean, Christmas, the holidays were gangbuster relative to what I thought were real economic headwinds. Why? Because everybody loaded up credit cards. When are they getting those credit card bills? Right now, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. So why, why is JP Morgan putting a big loan loss provision up uh, in their fourth quarter? Uh, quarter because they know that they're going to realize real losses uh, this year. Yeah. I, I, every time I hear a trader talk about the strength of the consumer and how good the consumer is, uh, I want to smack them in the face and say, what does the consumer have in their wallet? A bunch of credit cards. They have no cash. They have credit cards. So well, Mitch, um, you, you go ahead, Joe. You're dead right. And, and remember that the, my favorite one that sets me off is the the $3.1 trillion of cash that the consumer has. And yet, if you divide the consumer by households, by uh, household income, top 5%, 10%, 20%, about 80% of that cash is in the top 20%. Yeah. It's not yeah. Sitting, I mean, this idea that Joe and Mary Sixpack are sitting at home with three grand of stimmy cash and, you know, they're just waiting to, to play the lottery or something, that the data no. doesn't back that up. No, by the way, that stimmy cash is gone. They yeah. went on a carnival cruise. They <laughs> spent the money. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, the six pack is now natty light because <laughs> the place where they buy beer may not take credit cards. Uh, the days of you know, them drinking an import are over. Um, I, I, I talk to regular Americans because uh, you can do that in Florida. When I live in New York, it's very difficult to talk to regular <laughs> Americans. Uh, you you know. have a much better tan now, Mitch, than when I first yeah. met Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The tan, and the tan is real, by the way. Yeah, and, I don't understand. And, that. And it rained the last two days, so I will work on it this weekend. I got a little George Hamilton thing working. Yeah, you got the there thing. you go. <laughs> yeah, like Polly Walnuts on The Soprano. Polly Walnuts. But, but, <laughs> but the, the reality is the, the everyday consumer, okay, is loading up on debt. And this is a piper that will be paid. We're going we're gonna to hear about it at every one of the banks in their earnings report. We may or may not hear about it on Visa and MasterCard because they're about the fees and don't have the balance sheet. OK, so so they're they're They don't care. Uh, American Express, we may or may not uh, hear about it. But when you talk to the banks and then the non-banks, the Capital Ones, like all of those folks, pay close attention to that. And that's why these big banks, Wells Fargo came out, B of A came out, Jamie Dimon came out. And, and whether it be in part of their earnings forward guidance or just when they were on the speaking stump, they're talking about recession because they know it because they're seeing two things. They're seeing small businesses not able to get debt because the debt market suck. You can't borrow money. Yep. And number two, the consumer loading up on household debt. Yeah, well, that's I mean, right. Add, add this, Todd, that this sort of blew me away when I got the data from the auto manufacturers. The average loan for a new car today in the United States is almost a thousand dollars, nine hundred and seventy-five bucks. Now, yeah, I don't want to be the old card again, but nine hundred and seventy-five bucks a month for a for a car that you know you can't write off—that that's real. That is going to be so Ally Financial. You know, we're not short Ally, but we're certainly you know quizzical. 
about that. Credit One, in, in, you know, in another way. Um, but you know, that's the consumer. But you know, let, let's also go back to uh, what's going in the stock market because in the actual stock market, what's intriguing to me is I like to look at it not on a daily basis but on a weekly basis because that sort of smooths out you know a lot of this stuff. And we are right at the you know the demarcation line. Sorry to use that big word, Todd. I know you're in Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> the, the right between the go or no go on the S&P 500, you know, sort of 4,100 is the point or if you can get above and stay above. We have the, the higher, uh, you know, the lower highs, the lower highs that we're now. So we're at that, that pivot point that you use it. And the other thing I track are these huge trillion dollar, um, you know, uh, leverage trading uh, firms, which just traded futures and they, 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 you know, they're doing billions and billions a day. All of a sudden the CTA guys who used to be negative, they flip totally positive. And in, in my indexing, there's about a 98% correlation between short-term stock market activity up and yeah. down and the CTAs, you know, covering their shorts. And that's, so that's why we're at. The, the, the true test is going to be, as we get through lower earnings, lower guidance, um, the recession light that, that I've been talking about for a long time because of employment rates. Let's get through that before somebody declares victory. Uh, and okay. oh, by the way, we're making a ton of money on like little stupid stuff. The bull market within the 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 or the bull market within the bear market. Yeah. Um, you know, energy transport, ridiculous. Um, you know, some of our pipelines. You know, other things that actually pay big dividends. So why mess around trying to figure out all this stuff when there's you know things going up in value because they're selling at one and two PEs and they pay yeah fourteen percent dividends. Why? Well, good point. Good point. I think the most important data point that came out today was the University of Michigan Consumer Go Sentiment blue. Index. Go yeah, blue. There you go. I, I, I know you have a connection to Michigan there, Mitch. And I, and I got to say, the, when you see that number, it actually popped 8.2% from December. So the consumer is still feeling healthy. It's, if that's the case and you had, they're taking on all this debt, I mean, it could, be a, it could be a crash and burn situation coming up in the next few months. But that remains to be seen. So let's wrap it up there, guys. Coming up next, though, after the break, we are going to be talking about this debt ceiling that's taking place in Washington. There's quite oh, a bit cares? of drama. That's it's, quite it's, a bit of drama. It's building up, and it's not just that. It's also these pandemic loans, the defaults that are taking place, Toby. I want to get your thoughts, both of your thoughts, on what this means for the, for the overall economy. Please stay with us. Buy, hold, sell live, brought to you by Transformity Research. I want you to smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Buy, Hold, Sell. Today being Friday, Friday the 13th, Friday, January 13th. And actually, uh, as a side note, according to, to Stock, Stock Traders Almanac, Jeffrey Hirsch, he has actually said Friday the 13th is always a good day, or not always, but most of the time it's a good day in the markets. And he wasn't right. Th he wasn't wrong this time. Dow was up over 100 points today, which is fabulous news considering all the headwinds that are out there. But that's a whole other story, guys. I really want to get your thoughts, particularly you, Mitch, because I know you talk about this quite often. It's about this debt ceiling issue that's taking place in Washington. Currently, the debt ceiling is set at $31.4 trillion dollars. They just said Congress raised it by two and a half trillion back in December 2021. But we are 78 billion from reaching the limit, Mitch. I mean, 78 billion. We're probably going to run out by, well, I don't know, eight o'clock tonight. Yes. What do you think, though, Mitch? What a, kind of an impact? We continue to ignore the issues. We were just talking about debt in the last block for the consumer. But this country is facing an enormous amount of debt that's never going to be paid. What kind of vulnerability does that mean for us as a country going forward? I was talking earlier with the great economist, uh, uh, Representative uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who, who took economics at uh, Boston University, and she was selling me on this notion of modern monetary theory. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry, sorry. That, that, that was my- AOC, that was my, the squad. Yeah. That was my attempt at sarcasm. Well, Dude, a couple of things, you, you know, you could bar, we, we could bar all the money we wanted when, you know, short term rates were basically zero and not worry about it because all we had to pay back is principal. But now we're borrowing money when short term rates are 5%, uh, which is a big piper that has to get paid. Uh, you know, Stephen Mnuchin, when he was Treasury Secretary, 
had tried to advance this notion of taking all of the long-term debt of the United States and refinancing it at then rates and running out about 100 years. Uh, had we have done that, we would have you know, saved uh, a tremendous amount of money for future generations. But now we're writing you know, 20-year paper, 30-year paper with a four-handle in front of it, or right now maybe a three-handle in front of it. So the problem doesn't go away. Here's the thing that really scares me. When our debt to GDP ratio is debt to GDP as opposed to GDP to debt, and we're at 120 something percent uh, our debt to GDP, and we look like a third world country, mm -hmm. that to me is a problem. Think about how much economic expansion we need just to catch up to that debt. And if the weighted average coupon on our national debt, let's just say it's five, okay? And we're not making, we're not, we're paying off principal with principal, okay? So our economy has to grow at greater than 5% just to, to lap that cost of carry, if you just think about it purely from a corporate finance perspective. So uh, they'll have to raise the debt ceiling. And that is the absolute scariest thing to me. There is no way, by the way, and maybe, you know, I don't want to suck up all the earth time, but th if you look at entitlement programs, and this administration in two years has done nothing but pile on more of them, if you look at entitlement programs throughout history, at least in my 62 years on this planet, I don't know of a time when we've added an entitlement program and gotten rid of it. So how do we yeah. cut back spending if we don't have a way to cut back entitlements because our population is getting older and we're just spending more and more and more? Yeah, Mitch, that's right. I mean, it's, you know, it's an interesting thing. We could have had this conversation two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, it is sort of the the, the redheaded stepchild in the in the closet that we just sort of pretends not there. Um, the market's going to continue that it's it's not there. That's just human nature. You don't see those numbers. Um, the scariest one to me always has been. Uh, first off, we owe more in Medicare and in Social Security than we take in every year. The idea, right. you know, remember that trust fund thing, which was pretty yeah. hilarious. So you got to add, in my mind, if you're going to really have an honest conversation, you have to add about another hundred trillion dollars to the federal obligations. Because remember, at this point, the federal government is an insurance company that has its own standing army. I mean, if you look at where the dollars go, um, but the issue is the dollar. I mean, what would scare me, and what you're starting to see now is you have sort of the the China, Iran, <laughs> Russia axis. And, um, you know, they reject our values, uh, Mitch. I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that Putin was such a uh, marvelous human being, but, um, <laughs> but, but it's our horrible <laughs> values, you know? So, um, you know. Does he know that you gave up drinking for <laughs> January, though? <laughs> yeah, look at me, my face. I, 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 I got to get some makeup on, for Christ's sake. I'm having a, you know, rebirth. Um, but, you know, the, in 1972, uh, we had this oil, oil thing, and then 74, and we went to the uh, Saudis and we said, look, we'll protect you guys from all the bad stuff. You just got to trade oil in dollars. And they said, you know, yeah, because we got we got nothing we can do anyway. That has continued forever. And that dollar, that has made the dollar strong. The biggest fear to me, Mitch, is that, um, that the dollar, it's not that the dollar is going to not be the reserve currency. But if China and Russia really go after this, um, and go with the digital one and the digital, you know, w w which they certainly can, and they're the second largest economy, then at the margin or on the margin, if dollar values goes down, geez, that's great if I'm an international company because I'm making more profits. But then all of a sudden, our cost of debt goes up. And remember, I think our interest last year, the fiscal year was $782 billion. If you take the number today and, and use your four handle, uh, then it's $1.6 trillion. We only have a 200, excuse me, a 20 trillion dollar, you know, uh, economy. Um, and and we only and the and the, the IRS only takes in four point something trillion dollars a year in tax revenue. Right, exactly. Right. Oh, so, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. The rich weren't paying their fair share. Though. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 We need so, a windfall yeah. profits tax. So well. I mean, yeah. So we're <laughs> right. So we need a windfall tax break. So you know, uh, I'm not worried about me, but I'm worried about Todd's kids. Uh, you know, younger ones that at some point we pay the piper right now, who cares? We just keep uh, going. Yeah, we just keeps going. But and don't worry, Todd, yeah. Todd, Todd's based upon my Facebook uh, read, Todd's kids play lacrosse. They'll be fine. 
Because yeah, there's a lot sorry. of money in there's a lot of be money to be made <laughs> in lacrosse. La <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no doubt yeah. about that. Well, you know, well, I'll wrap it up with this though. Here's the thing: is that going forward, because I look at Bloomberg is they're constantly telling us when uh, when the new bills and new notes are coming out, and they're coming out at these higher rates right now. So right now we're looking at. Just managing this debt is difficult. Imagine what it's going to be a full year from now at these higher rates. I think that's where it becomes well, really crippling, and that's Todd, where we're going to really feel it. But the argument, the best argument I've heard about the Fed peaking out on rates is that the Fed and the Treasury know better than anybody that they can't keep rates at 5% or 6%, for God's sake, because we can't afford to pay the interest. And right. that's the issue. So the Fed will monetize the interest. Remember, the Treasury calls up, hello, Fed, needs uh, $2 trillion. Okay, boom, you got $2 trillion. But um, you know that, that's dangerous, though. Of course that means they're actually manipulating. They're, they're setting monetary policy off of the existing no, debt. No, you're saying they rather than it? Oh, Todd, yeah. come on. <laughs> well, all right. That's a topic for a whole other story. So listen, <laughs> we'll shut it down right there because I think we're going down a rabbit hole. And we'll save that for another time. So, right. so listen. All right. So listen. I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, today for buy, hold, sell. Uh, Mitch Rochelle's with us. As it's, thanks a lot, Mitch Rochelle, for being with us. You can capture him and catch him on actually everything on Fox Business and Fox News. I think you got some other podcast that's going on as well, Mitch. I think. I mean, am I, am I wrong about that? Yeah, no, that we kind of, you know, where you can find me though. I'll get put a plug in. Tell you me. can find me on. You can find me on Center Clip. And if you haven't um, downloaded the Center Clip app, you should do it. Find me on Center Clip. There's a plug. That's a shameless plug right there. Center Clip. I, we will promo that as well. So, uh, so that's great. Mitch, thank you so much for you bet, joining guys. us. Also, on behalf of Tobin Smith at Transformity Research, and speaking of lacrosse, if anyone is attending the Sandstorm Lacrosse Festival in Indio, California this weekend, my son's playing in it. Have a wonderful time. Great weekend. It should be wonderful. And go Ravens. Go Ravens. Take care. <laughs> go Ravens. Any any team coached by Harbaugh. That's what I have. To there say. you go. Oh, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Take care. Have See you guys. Day. You bet. Cheers. Hi, everyone. I'm Veronica Dudo, and welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. If you have the Russians that are going into Ukraine, the Americans and the Germans and everyone else in Europe is going to say, hell no. If Russia doing things you know, logically was their M.O., I'd agree with you. Yeah, Todd, why don't you get him on, on a phone call right now? Hello? You <laughs>